Today's presentation is on, uh, there we go, Kostas Slavatai, which uh, was a lodge that existed in uh, Salem, Oregon, back, uh, up until 1994. Uh, uh, the meaning of the lot, uh, the translation of the lodge is Snow Mountain Lodge. And that is a reference to Camp Pioneer, uh, uh, the dining hall and the office building up there, which, uh, you know, they can't, uh, which derived the name of Costa Slavitai. Uh, it's in Chinook jargon. So that's, uh, you know, an interesting thing to know. The main summer camp of that lodge was Camp Pioneer up on, uh, on the slopes of Mount Jefferson. And the backup camp was Camp Morrison, which was in the foothills of the Cascades. Pioneer is still in use by Juan Lamonte and Cascade Pacific, and Camp Morrison was in use up to about 2010 by uh, Cascade Pacific, and they sold it for timber. Uh, key for me former members of that lodge that are known in the scouting community were our Todd Hatfield, of course, Doug Beers, a lot of people know Doug, Ed Harris, who uh, uh, was a big-time collector up until he uh, passed away in 20, uh, 2002, and Mark Smith, who ha works a lot of the Jamborees and stuff, and uh, was the former lodge advisor for Cold Staff Slamatai, who now lives in uh, Nevada. Just go over uh, a little bit of the jewelry that's been produced by uh, Cold Staff Slamatai during their uh, history. They've uh, a, bo a bolo tie which this is a scrimshaw or something like that. You know, you carve it out of uh, ivory or something. Well, not, I'm not going to say ivory, but, you know, some special stone that they uh, uh, create this out of. Uh, I can't remember. He's some other ivory, but it's, you know, uh, something like that. You have the Codwell pen. The, uh, I've only know there's only two that I've seen the uh, Codwell pens I've seen in collections in Oregon. And, uh, one is this one. The other one's on a sash that uh, Frank Kern owns that has a lot of uh, prominence for uh, the lodge and the council there uh, in uh, Salem. Uh, they made a buckle for the 50th, which uh, was in 94, and there's only one hat pin that we found out. And so th that covers the jewelry of uh, this lodge. Uh, the odd shapes, uh, the first Every issue from Costa Slavitai was A1. And uh, that's this one right here. And that, uh, according to uh, the lodge historians, this was put on the pocket. They don't think any of them were put on a neckerchief. Then they came out with uh, X1, which was came out about five years later. And this was put on a neckerchief as well but uh some people uh used it on a blanket took it on and sew it on the neckerchief and then this little number here is this lodge patch that came out in 1992 it was more of a joke and the trading post advisor at that time was todd hatfield and he had to slaughter a lot of nagas to get enough naga hide to get uh to make those patches and that's the naga hide uh, patch and it was they sold them in the section trading flows in case somebody forgot to put their uh, lodge flap on their uniform. So we always said uh, Todd went Naga hunting before uh, that conclave to make sure that we had enough of those patches, enough hide for those patches. He made about a hundred of them. Uh, the uh, There's a military patch that closely resembles the X-1. It's been attributed to the Colstas a lot of times, but this is a uh, army issued by the army and you see it in uh, OA images and a few other places, but, uh, and some people have called it YX one, but uh, we in uh, Oregon and when we write the book, we're, we're not even going to make mention of it. We're not even give it the justice of calling it a Y, uh, a Y issue. It's just going to be, you know, notated, you know, in the uh, footnotes as this patch exists, but it's not uh, a boy scout patch. And you know it's a military patch. Uh, they, uh, as I mentioned, X one was put on a neckerchief, and then the first o and only neckerchief that Costas Lavatai put on is uh, this one off to the side here, which is uh, the N one. There are a couple of since they were uh, 
embroidered on the machine. There are a couple of variations in it, but this, this is the basic artwork and shape. This one um, is Paul Collette's uh, that he submitted to OA Images because mine's buried in a box somewhere. But uh, this is the standard uh, issue that they use for, you know, when we'll come out, they came out about 85, 85 to uh, the end of the lodge. Cole Snass issued four chenilles, uh, starting with this white chenille, uh, C1. And, uh, C2 has a couple of variations in it, but the standard, uh, it looks like this. I only collected one because I said, good grief, you're talking about a chenille. There's going to be variations in it. Then when you see this one with the yellow 50 on it, this was issued for their 50th anniversary. So this was one of the two last chenilles. These were issued together, the vigil chenille and the um, 50th chenille. They came out in 1994, early 1994. And, you know, that this one being C3, this one being C4. Uh, if you're lucky, you could probably pick up all four for about $250. You know, if you get find the right person at the right time to, uh, to get them. They're, you know, these two are harder. These two aren't. Coast Nass has issued one jacket patch. That was their 50th. In their, their 50th, they went kind of whole hog. They issued several flaps and, you know, a jacket patch, a buckle, you know, two chenilles. So they just went nuts. Uh, they uh, over the years they've issued anniversaries. This is the 25th. This one's a little bit tough to come by. You know, the 40th, two for the OA 75th, and two for the 50th. This one, this one has gold mylar uh, checkers in it uh, as a checkerboard. This one does not. I've seen more of these available than I have of those, which is funny because mm. they produce more of these than those. They. <laughs> So this issue, they produce more of than this issue, but you see this one on eBay more often. There's 12 issues. There, this is F1. That's F1A and F1B. This one is 12 left. This one's no 12. Um, actually, the F1A is you know, proven to be a little bit more difficult to get to the F1B. Yeah, and when you're on eBay and you look at them, you can't tell the difference. So I'm always bidding and winning them. I say, good grief, I got another F1B, you know, so, you know, because people don't take uh, cleared up pictures. This one, Ethan and I you know, worked at the camera angles and all that, finally got it shown the tool direction on the F1A so that people could see the difference on it. Uh for the first 25 years, Kostas issued four flaps. <laughs> this is up to about, oh, 69. They issued uh, four flaps. And actually, you know, you could almost go 30 years because this one uh, was continually issued up to about the early 70s. Or actually late, uh, the mid 70s. This one came out about 69. It's he, uh, it's uh, one of the more difficult flaps of cold staffs to pick up, especially in mint, because a lot of them were sewn. So, you know, here, you know, here's the picture. I'm going to start on the solid flaps. This is their first uh, regular issue after they had the basic green background. This one came out about 1981-82. They didn't like the yellow border, so they went to a red border that came out about 83-84. But um these two almost came out together so they did a reorder and if you could tell you got a mountain you know the straight reflection there and on this one the uh, reflection is shifted on the mountain so it was kind of like wow you know how in the world and instead of rejecting uh sending this back to the manufacturer they issued them out you know because they ran low on these flaps then about 1985, they decided to put an arrow on it because uh, they just wanted to do something different. 
and it came uh, the, in conjunction, they issued the 40th flop, which for me was a little bit more difficult to obtain, but you know, not too hard. Uh, 86, 87 was this, what they call monstrosity in the lodge. But I, it was funny because I acquired mine at the 1987 W4B Conclave of Southern California. And I was going, when did this one come out? Because I knew about these these ones, but I didn't know that they issued a new flap. And so I got, had to get a hold of my buddy up there and say, you know, hey, I got this new flap from Colstas. Is it a fake or something? He says, no, you got that ugly thing. And I said, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to verify it. <laughs> oh, starting about the, oh, right after that uh, one flap, about 87 you know, to 88, they issued these. There's a size difference on this one. This one's kind of oversized. This one is not. So this one came out. And then they reordered this one about the time they did the uh, NOAC. They used this basic design up through about 1990. And they issued uh, two different 75th anniversary flaps. And it's, it, it's a cloth back, but it's not very durable. I want to say, I want to say, so they, they had a, uh, in 1991, they decided that they were going to issue a new flap. That was kind of neat. This is, a uh, uh, Mount Jefferson overlooking, uh, one of the waterfalls at Silver Creek Falls, which is a park, uh, just North of, uh, Salem and, uh, which has many, many waterfalls in it. And of course they have their bear looking over the waterfall and it looks like he's, interested in the fish so that was the ordeal issue the brotherhood the vigil the alingabat the conclave service so all all these came out about uh you know 91 this was issued in 92 this came out in 93 which has a nice little story the lodge rejected a jamboree issue you know for it and the contingent members from salem who were at that time, a members of Cascade Pacific Council, because the council had merged about uh, January 1, were upset because they didn't have a flap in, uh, and Skylu did. So they appealed their decision to the chief scout executive of the council, and the chief of the fire said, yes, you could have one and issue one. Well, the LEC refused to uh, do it. They said, nope, it ain't happening. You know, still can't do it. And the scout executive fired the lodge chief and produced the patch. <laughs> um, the uh, one of the uh, the last of that series, this came out in 1993 as well, issued with the um, council merger set. So there's a gold bylar one with the Skyler design, but these two, this came in a council merger set. This one's probably as easy as the Brotherhood uh, brother, Brotherhood ordeal flap with this design, these, these three are bearers to get, you know, quite literally. <clears throat> so well, that leads us to 1994, where there were four issues. <clears throat> I described these two 50th anniversary ones. Then we have <clears throat> the death flap issued by the council for it, which is this one right here that came in a set that had a sky loop piece that went on that side and down here was a uh, Lamonte X1. So it was a three piece set issued by the council and while Juan Lamonte and Costas Levitide Lodge in conjunction with each other. <sighs> Costas decided that they wanted a death flap that was not associated with the set. And they said, you know, so they issued this one at their final banquet their 50th anniversary banquet which was held on june 30th 1994 and the reason why i emphasize that date is july 1st 1994 uh while lamonte lodge became official there are two historical issues that came out in uh, 2011 and they look exactly the same except for the border is a gold bylar you know on it the gold bylaw was issued to Camp Pioneer staff. There were 50 of them made. 
uh, this again was a chief scout executive uh, issue that uh, the lodge rejected it, told camp pioneer staff that they could not have their own flat this year. So the business manager and camp director said, okay, we won't put Juan Lamonte on it. We'll put Cole Stas Lamatai on it and, uh, and issue it. The lodge objected to it because they said we own the rights to that name, it's Cole Stas Lamatai, as well as uh, Hayes Chuck, Quezon Colado, and Skylou. You can't issue anything with that name on it without LEC approval. So it went on for about a year, you know, arguing back and forth. And then finally, you know, with pressure from the chief, from the scout executive, they approved the issues. A <clears throat> uh, couple of event issues issued by uh, uh, Cole Stas. Actually, these things are, they're not that easy to find, you know, and, you know, there's a 12 year difference. And it's the only um, event issues issued by um, Cole Stas Labatai. And you can't even tell her uh, Costa Slamatai unless you look at OA Cascade area and figure that's from Cascade Area Council. And then this, you know, with the CAC here as well with the SASH, that those are both uh, uh, Costa Slamatai event issues. So this is um, e, uh, ER 1979 and this is EX 1991. No variations, no button loops, no nothing, just what you see there. Going to the cream of crop flaps, I'm gonna go with a degree of difficulty. So the first one is the Conclave service slap. These range from $1,500 to $2,000. I do not have one yet. This uh, banquet flap runs about five to $600. The Alingamat flap runs about 400. Uh, this, these two run, range about $200 a piece. The, you used to be able to pick these up for about 75 to 100, but then uh, as they've all been absorbed into collections, it's become more difficult to do. But I call these the cream of the crop into flaps, you know, and then, you know, of course, X1, you know, as well, because it's a difficult piece to acquire as well. It's about, you know, eight to eight thousand eight hundred thousand dollars to get a decent x1 if you get one on cloth it's you're working with about a thousand dollars you know i know that people have gotten it cheaper but you know most of the time when i've seen it come up it's come up about nine hundred to a thousand dollars there's a yl1 that was a chief's award that was issued to a longtime member of the lodge there's one that is known in existence kevin uh I've discovered it and uh, put it in the Ed Harris auction and Kevin Redisol, uh dropped about $1,300 on it and he owns it and he provided the picture for me. A lot, uh, the lodge existed for 50 years, merged with uh, Skylou the day after the 50th anniversary. Uh, Wild Lamonte Lodge honors its past and in 2014 we issued a flap. We went off the uh, S3 design and uh, created the, uh, the flap below. And on it, we mentioned 259 70th. And we were going to do one for the 75th, but it happens to be that the 75th anniversary of Colstad Slamatai falls on the 25th anniversary of Juan Lamonte. <laughs> so we wanted to do a 25th anniversary for Juan Lamonte. Uh, I'm going to give a few, uh, give a few shout out credits here. Uh, the main two people who helped me were uh, Frank Kern and Todd Hatfield. Uh, Todd being the uh, historian for Costa Slamatai, Frank for having the biggest collection, you know, of Pacific Northwest stuff on the planet. Um, and Kevin Redesel, he provided me the uh, the leather piece that uh, you saw, and he also uh, got me a decent copy of the um, X1 on cloth. Ethan Jones, because he's starting, he's starting to rewrite the book. And, you know, he, uh, a couple of the images I borrowed from the book that I provided him, but he put in the book. So I have to give him credit. So uh, all those three people, you know, and if I want to give a post-mortem credit, I would have to say Ed Harris as well. How big was the lodge in its prime? In its prime, I'd say probably about 250. 
it, it was a small lodge in about four counties in Oregon, and they were all small counties in Marion, Jefferson, Polk, and Lynn counties. Is the, the white bear that's on the patches, is that a polar bear, or could it happen to be the spirit bear that's on Vancouver Island? No, this this was a polar bear. They they liked it because, it, you know, they the black bear has always been a totem, but for some reason, they liked the contrast of the uh, white bear on uh, on the neckerchief here. And then if you look at the um, green flaps, uh, the green background flaps, the contrast was better than a black bear on those flaps. I don't know. You know, I've been trying to get from, you know, the lodge, you know, designer who designed those, but uh, he's passed away. But I said, why in the world did they use a white bear when there's no polar bears in Oregon? 